every crime that they investigate that they have to report or turn over to the state, or is it certain crimes? So if you look at current Ohio public records law, um, certain investigation, uh, pieces of information, work product as they prepare for prosecution, those are protected. You can't just, and, and you guys know that. Um, what we're talking about is that, um, you know, complaint, that rash of break-ins, that assault, um, that's a situation where it would prompt a report or an, an incident report of some sort, possibly lead to an arrest. That's the component that this private officer or public officer would both engage in and is subject to every Ohioan's eyes. Now, is this going to be, well, let me clarify this and this may help. Okay. Um, is this going to be a situation where the private police force that's hired to keep the noise down in the dorm goes over there to tell the, the students, hey, you're making too much noise, you got to keep it down. Does that have to be reported? So, well, where, where's the line? When you say reporting, nothing's really been reported, but their their records are available to the public for scrutiny. Okay, so they're not going to be turning everything over to the state for scrutiny, but as the public might request information, this is this is kind of the gray area. This is what we're trying to separate. What is when are they acting as a as a we'll say an agent for the for the public as a police officer? When are they working as an employer for their employee to their employer to just you know maintain control uh, of the students. So once it reaches a level of a criminal act and there is an arrest, those are definitely going to be should be available to the public. Beyond that, um, we need to make sure we're protecting the privacy of the institution or the, the, the employer. So there's a gray area. We're trying to figure out exactly where that line is. Just to follow up with Representative Haney, um, you know, apply this same scenario to a public university now. Do you read about every noise complaint in, in the paper today? Probably not. Um, this, is, this is absolutely going to um, look a little different uh, if, if passed in its current form in that private officers or universities in particular, they don't just wear that hat of making an arrest or taking a police report. Um, they're serving many functions on that campus, one of which might be you know, education prevention, addressing small issues with dorms. So um, there's some separation here, and we're all working together. These universities are at the table to help us define and to allow us the opportunity to define the difference between uh, you know, a felony arrest and these other responsibilities that they have. But this is by no means an open door to cast a light into every operation area of a private university or hospital or any place we might find a private officer today. But you're not even requiring reporting, actually. You're requiring them to keep open books on arrests. Anything that involves arrests. To make a record. Okay. Just like just, any just like other public police officer. As you've uh, spoken to members in each of your caucuses, do you get a sense that there is a deliberate desire to keep these records private, or is this something that many of your colleagues just were unaware of? This is, <coughs> these are not available. Um, I'll speak for my caucus. She can speak for hers. I know we're very concerned about in, intrusion into a private business. Okay? Um, Got to be very careful to not cross that line. Uh, but I, I think we all became aware by some recent articles that we read in the paper. Um, I know Representative Patton, Patton had, a, had a, a similar, he had a bill of a similar, but not quite as broad. But uh, I'm not sure we were all that aware of it before the news, news articles. And I'll, I'll just add that um, I, I completely agree with Representative Haney. Um, we, have, we don't want to add undue burden to small business. Actually, we consider them a stakeholder in uh, any community that uh, should be privated or privy to the same information that a student walking on a campus or a patient entering into a hospital would have uh, as it pertains to, to some kind of crime that occurred. Um, with that being said, I think that a general sentiment uh, in, in maybe even the House to speak for every member, I'll speak for myself for sure, 
is one of transparency and fairness. Does this have, um, how did this get on your radar? Was this from the Otterbein case and what you read in the newspaper, or is there actually someone or a compelling situation that put it on your radar? This absolutely was, it was generated by a local paper story. Can you, can you talk about any opposition that you've heard from in your meetings thus far, and, and uh, what kind of uh, responses you've been giving those folks? So opposition, I think it's too early to call people opposers. Concerned, yes. I, yeah, I, I think this is the time where when you propose the legislation, people come to the table and let you know what their concerns are. And we've just had our, our initial interested party meeting where everybody's come to the table, expressed their initial concerns. We've uh, asked them to put those concerns in writing so that we can turn those into proposed amendments for the legislation. And, you know, as it, it it, it adheres to the spirit of the legislation, which is transparency. Um, we will consider all of those amendments. But right now, I, I wouldn't say that we're... There's no, no yeah, there was those. some of the, the, the concerns expressed, I'm not sure, are really legitimate. I mean, I think the, the, the law actually does address it, um, but we, we need smarter people than at least I am. The <laughs> LSC and the Attorney General to kind of weigh in to make sure that these concerns, they, they had some legitimate concerns that we, we, we just feel we need to address before we... Can you say what areas that's in, you know, in detail, but can you really say what generally, what, what parts so of the you might be looking at? Think about any business model today. <coughs> um, there's a, a general concern for um, the availability of resources. And when you suggest change in, in a business model, like a, you know, a hospital or a small business or a, a, a university setting, um, that, that's kind of uncomfortable, and what exactly does that mean? But in this instance, it applies to a very small handful of peace officers, and the, the vast majority here already have adopted models to how to you know, uh, manage these police reports, um, man maintain records, so we're already materially there. There are models available, the Attorney General's office was in our uh, part, interested party meeting this morning to kind of weigh in on that too and, and give some direction as to, look, we're not trying to recreate or, or invent the wheel. We're trying, there, you don't have to recreate it. Um, it. The models are already there. Now, if it's a totally private police force, is does that affect anything in this bill or is it just uh, affecting those police officers that could be working on public time as well, but they're working on private time for a private company. So we're not we're not talking about private office or private police forces, security guards and the like. We are talking about thirty three thousand <coughs> approximately peace officer trained and certified individuals who have the ability in the state of Ohio to seize your property, you as a person take a life when necessary. That's the group of people acting on in, in, that, be, in that behalf. That's who we're talking about. Do you think this might have the downside, though, of um, uh, those universities that have private police forces that employ a public off-duty officer in their capacity? Do you think it might have the um, uh, unintended consequence of just getting them to go with all private police for get rid of the police uh, peace officers so that they don't have to deal with this. You know what I mean? No, to get away from it. Yeah. Well, one you know one thing that interested me is I don't want um, people trying to bypass the law and to keep seek you know keep some things that should be public private by hiring private police officers. There are certain things the public should have a right to know. Anytime they're acting, as I try, best description is as an agent of the public by performing those duties of arresting, detaining, um, you know, citizens. Those are what needs to be to have scrutiny. Okay, uh, those are what the public needs to to be able to hold them accountable. 